Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me Wesley Peterson and today I am out and going to be working in the part of my garden called the Garden of New Beginnings and I have a border behind me here that has been growing out wildly and I haven't done anything with it for quite some time. I've tried a few times to plant some different plants in here and they haven't worked out so now I'm going to rearrange this again and put some new plants in and see what happens this time. So we have a bit of a ditch on the side of this border in front where we will be having a pond at some point. So we just need to get ourselves together to get our protective fiber and the black lining so that we can sort out this pond at some point. But in the meantime, this is a border that is going to be in the top end of the pond. So behind the border, I have these Thuya Occidentalis Brabant and they've been doing really well and I've just pruned them back. So they're giving a lovely evergreen backdrop. And in this border, I have nothing but weeds growing and I've actually really enjoyed them. I have stinging nettles, I have common comfrey and different other plants growing in here. There's been ground elder and all sorts of the wild plants that come into the garden. And They've looked very, very nice. So they've grown up and filled out this area and it looks like a lovely wild border. And I've just been in and as I trimmed the hedge, I trimmed down half of all of these wild plants that are growing in here because they were getting very leggy and out of hand. And this is the state of it right now. <laughs> so I want to go in and sort this out completely. Now I have a self-seeded cherry tree in the middle there that's growing and I have a few of those around and about so I'm just going to take that up and find some other home for that and I'm thinking that I want to go in and collect all of the root balls and the plants that I have of the common comfrey because I'd actually like to keep those and plant them along both the edges of this border when I'm finished because they look very nice with their purple flowers when they come out and their leaves can be used as a lovely mulch layer on different borders and they give a lot of nitrogen back to the soil when they've been broken down. So they're very good for that. They're also very good for all of the insects, the bees and everything else that comes around during the summer season that likes their nectar and come and pollinate them. Everything else I'm going to try and take up as much as possible to minimalize the amount of wild plants that come up in this border after I've finished because I have a specific kind of shrub type tree that I'm going to plant in the middle here and that is an elder buckthorn that I had growing in my crystal woods area just on the edge of the wild orchard garden in an area where I wanted to plant another plant. So I took out this and it was growing over a stone. So it was actually quite easy for me to get up and it still has a lot of its roots. So I think this is going to work and I think it will establish itself fine. It will probably droop now for a while or maybe for the rest of the season, but it will bounce back next year. And it's not an optimal time now in mid August to go and move a whole tree and plant it somewhere else when you're breaking the roots and so forth because it's still got all its foliage on and this bush you will see when I show you it later has a lot of berries on looks very beautiful right now but I couldn't do anything about it because I needed to plant out my other plants in that specific area in my crystal woods because it's a very moist ground area and I've planted out some plants there that will do very well there but back to this border I'm going to start by taking up the common comfrey and then I'm going to strim the whole area and then I'm going to try and get out a lot of root balls and then I'll be ready to plant in the elder buckthorn and I'm also going to plant in jumbo bamboos because I'd like this actually to stay evergreen all year in the border around my shrub tree to keep winter interest instead of all of this dying back and being completely flat every single year. When I come around here, I would like to have these jumbo bamboos that grow up and they can get to around three meters high that grow up around and keep this looking interesting all the time, especially when we have our pond put in. So basically, I'm just going to get on with this now and start with getting up these common comfrey. So before I carry on, I just wanted to take up one of these common comfrey to show you. their lovely leaves. That's what their lovely leaves look like and they can get even bigger than that. They have big thick roots as you can see down here. And if they don't get enough light or if they're allowed to just grow out and get straggly, well, look at this monstrosity here. This is, well, you can see it. 
It's around about one and a half meters tall, but of course it couldn't support all of this and has flopped and where I prune back the new leaves are coming out. So that is also just to show you that if this plant starts getting leggy or anything, go in and prune it right back and it will bounce back and you can do that a few times in a season and then use all the green mass that you take off as a good mulch layer for placing around your borders. It's a perfect plant for that. So I've got most of the pieces up from the back side. Now I can get into the middle where I have some lovely examples growing out there. So I need to get rid of all these long bits first. Off this plant. Because this plant has just grown out crazily. And then I should be able to get this lovely ball out here. So look at this lovely plant. I have a lot in there, lots of big roots. And this is all the new fresh growth after probably a week and a half, it's bouncing back. So it will be no problem to plant these out in the end and they will sag and then new leaves will come up in no time. So right, that was the common comfrey out now. So now I can basically go in, take out that cherry tree first and then go in and strim everything right down so I can see what I'm working with. I have an awful lot of rocks in here that I actually need to get out to start with. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get all of these stinging nettles, roots out and all sorts. So I just need to carry on with this. Well, as you can see, this cherry tree came up very easily, a very little root ball. This was a self-seeded cherry tree that I just placed there for now. And well, I've actually moved it around quite a few times and it's managed to bounce back. So I'm going to put this in the bucket with the water with the rest of the common comfrey and carry on. Now for the strimming. So now that's going to give me a better overview of the area I have to work with. And I have more rocks here that I need to try and take out of the border. I have this tree trunk that I can see here that's rotten very very dry that's going to be perfect for the biodiversity after another one here very good lots of rocks because when i've planted in i want to put my as i said my elder buckthorn in the middle and the evergreen bamboos the common comfrey around the edge and well weeds and so forth will come up in amongst all of that but it will be crowded out with time as the bamboo grows up and it's evergreen and so forth and they will reside it's okay to have a bottom canopy of weeds around. I want it to be half wild anyway. So let's get in and sort out some of these rocks and then try and get up some of the stinging nettles and so forth so that I'll be able to get to the soil a bit easier. You know what, I've decided this is impossible. Absolutely impossible. This area here is full of rocks and it's from when I excavated this big hole here to be the pond, piled up rocks here and so forth. It's impossible for me to get all of these large roots out of these plants. So I'm just going to pull up what I can and I'm going to put all of the rocks in a pile in the front here because I want an area that is absolutely perfect for all of the amphibians and other insects that will be going on around the pond. They love rocks. And well, it's going to have to be a half wild plant, half planted border, and I'll try and keep it in control so that it doesn't all leg out. I can go in and prune and keep a perfect mounding style. And then the nettles and things like that will look okay. So now I've dug out my hole and I'm going to put a little bit of fertilizer in there, water that hole through so it's really, really wet down deep in so that I can go and get my elder buckthorn and put it straight into this hole with some new soil mixed with this soil because I do want to give this lovely tree a good chance now that I've moved it. So before I go and get my elder buckthorn, I need to go and chop me some stabilizers for the tree because I know it's not going to be able to hold itself up for a while 
and I'm going to just get some stems with a fork, three of them, so that I can place them around to hold the tree stable, especially while I'm trying to put the soil around the edge. So now I have my three supporting stakes here, just some stems that I've made into forks at the end. They will hold my bush up now because it's very tall. Let me finally go and get it to show you. So here it is. I hope you can see it clearly on camera. This is my elder buckthorn that was growing wildly in my crystal woods area. I do have a few more out there, but this was the largest one and I had to move it because of planting something else. I had been in earlier and pruned this back at the top a few times when I've cleaned the area, not really thinking about what this bush was or anything because it was amongst so many other things. But when they come and they took away everything underneath the electric line we have going across our ground here. Every six years they come into our wild orchard garden area and they take down everything except bushes that don't get too tall. This bush can get to around four meters high normally but can get even taller than that and this is definitely on that four meter high level so it's a very mature bush and it can take between five and 10 years to just get that tall. It's a lovely bush. It has these lovely egg shaped leaves with a slight point at the end that's rounded and it has very prominent veining on it. That can be anything between five and 10 different veinings going along that creep around up towards the top of the leaf and don't actually touch the edge. The edge of the leaves are smooth. And then it has these lovely berries coming out all over it now here in August. They start out white and then turn more red and then they turn darker and darker until they are all completely black and they're absolutely beautiful. This shrub tree has beautiful stems that are grey going on a burgundy colour and it has all these white markings in it and it's just absolutely beautiful. So I can't wait to get this in the ground now. So now you can see the top of my shrub is out of the picture but look at these lovely three stems I have going on here. This plant could get many more stems. You can take all the stems off and leave one if you want to make it into a tree looking shrub. But I like that it's got these stems and they're gonna give a lot of architectural interest in the middle of this border here now. There's quite a lot of roots on the bottom. So I hope this is going to be able to sustain this plant so that it bounces back for me next season. Let's get it in the ground now. Right. Now I need my support to hold it in place. So now I've got my three supporting stakes into place. I need to go around from all sides to make sure that this plant is standing up exactly the way I want it to be. So now I think that is good enough. I know it looks like the stems are facing a little bit forward in the video, but they are very straight in the bottom and the rest will grow out in that kind of form and it's giving a leaning effect over the pond area that's going to come here. Absolutely fantastic and a fantastic plant for biodiversity. All of these berries that are poisonous to human beings, so do not go and try and eat these berries. They are perfect for birds and other animals in your garden. So a lovely plant for that and also gets lovely white flowers on it in the springtime so that it is perfect for all the insects and bees and so forth as well. So it's very good for many different animals and insects in your garden. So I've already put my sack of soil around this plant. Now I'm going to just rake over some of the existing soil. I put some gardening soil in there and then the soil that was already here, some more gardening soil filled up and now I'm putting the existing soil on top so it all merges together. So now, going back to my common comfrey that I took up before, I have all of this material here that I can place around the bottom of my tree that will become a source of nutrients for the plant and it will become a mulch and it will help to insulate this plant because I need to keep it moist for quite some time now. So this was absolutely perfect. So right, that's the first plant in. And now I need to go and get my bamboo plants that I am going to place around the edge. This is going to be wonderful. So right, believe it or not, two hours have passed 
and I've been off and had some lunch and had a shower and now I'm ready to carry on with this border because it's been quite hard work. So my tree, you can't see the top of it yet, but it's still looking quite good on its leaves. A little bit of sagging, but it's still looking quite good. And I'm expecting all of the leaves to be drooping by tomorrow because that is very inevitable and happens to nearly all trees when you replant them if you've disturbed and ripped up their roots. Not if you have a tree or a plant in a nice root ball in soil, then it should be absolutely fine. But this one has been ripped apart in its roots and still had a big root clump, but it's still a big shock for all of this plant. Anyway, on my right hand side here, I've been out and collected my jumbo bamboos and I can't wait to get these in this border where I'm going to be placing two, one or two on this side of my alba buckthorn and one or two on the other side. Now I have five altogether, so I'm thinking that I might want to place these around in different areas in my garden because I have them in my botanical garden and some are reaching the well over two meter tall mark now and they've bushed out really, really well. These I decided to move from Yorkin's Corner because they were in the back and they weren't getting that much light and they haven't grown out that much even though they're looking much better than I thought they would when I was pulling them out and they've got much bigger than I thought they were as well. There's just one in here that's not looking as good as the other ones you can see down at the front here but otherwise they are actually starting to grow out really well. So in these last two hours they've been in this wheelbarrow here and it's been filled with water and they've just been soaking up water for the two hours because they were bone dry. So they are so ready to be planted in this border and they are going to take off and look gorgeous. So maybe just two and then I can put three in different areas of my garden. We'll see how I go. Let me get on with getting these now into this border. So now these bamboos don't have very big root balls, so I didn't have to make a very big hole. And I can just use the soil that's already in here to put around them. I don't need to put any other new soil. I'll just put a little bit of fertilizer in the bottom to give them a good boost here in the beginning. So there we go, that's my first bush into place. And doesn't that look nice? Oh, can't wait to get the next one in on the other side now. So that's two of my bamboo plants in place. So I'm wondering if I should put another one at the front and get a nice ring of them around the bottom of my shrub here. The only thing that will do is it will cause me not to be able to see the three stems coming up out of this plant in the middle, but it's more to have the foliage and the effect of a taller plant and these jumbo bamboo will grow taller with time anyway and probably a bee around three meters so they'll catch up to the bottom of the canopy and this will be poking out at the top and none of those stems will be seen anyway so I might as well go in now already and plant in one more of these bamboos so that I get evergreen around here all year round and I did a video a while back quite a while back where I planted these out in Yorkins Corner and I'm not sure if I did a video of them when I planted them out in my botanical garden. So they do grow quite nicely if they're giving bright indirect sunlight to direct sunlight but mostly they like dappled light or bright indirect light as long as they're getting a decent amount of light then they'll grow faster but as you can see from these they will survive in a shadier situation but they will grow much slower. And here, it's absolutely fine. They will get the eastern light that comes all the way through down into this part of the garden during the morning till the afternoon, and then it becomes shady. So they will be getting some bright, dappled, direct and dappled light during the day. It's going to be perfect for them. So there we go. That is three of my bamboos in place. Looks absolutely fantastic, I think. And well, I could carry on and put another one here and another one over there. I do have space, but I'm going to leave that to plant in my common comfrey roots now. So I can keep those as low growing plants because I absolutely love their leaves. And it's absolutely fine that they flower out for me for the insects and so forth. And then I can go and cut them back before they start producing seeds because these common comfrey are a plant that spread very easy around and about, if not kept under control. So I will keep them here and I'll be able to use their lovely green leaf mass every time as a top layer of mulch around my other plants. So let me get those now into place. 
So before planting in these common comfrey, I actually went around in my garden and found some more examples that were just growing here and there in the wrong places. And here I can collect them, put them all together and they will look absolutely fantastic when they're not allowed to leg out like this. But as I said, this is fantastic biomass that's going to go around all of my bamboos as well now. So what I need to do is get these out of this container because I need the container so that I can collect all of the roots. So I have wonderful leaf stock coming out on these, new leaf stock, so I can prune off the larger pieces like this and then I have a lovely little plant ready to be planted in the border that is going to come up as a lovely mound already this year. Fantastic. And each root has exactly the same. New leaf stock coming out. Some of them just have the most enormous roots. Look at this. <laughs> oh, I do find this just so satisfying. And knowing that these plants are going to be gorgeous very soon. So, right, I think I've got all of my root balls now. So that was quite a lot of extra root balls. Now I have all of this to put around my, ooh, <laughs> around my bamboos first. Fantastic. Just like this. So now you've seen how much fantastic biomass you can get off these plants. Don't let anyone tell you that they are just weeds that grow up everywhere and they spread all over and they're invasive and they're all this. They can be many of those things, <laughs> but they can also be very beautiful plants in the right place and kept under control. I don't have to let these go to seed from now on. So every time I see a comfrey around my garden, I can place them all in here together and I can keep them pruned and they're going to be beautiful. They're never going to get like this really, the ones here, but when they do, it's fantastic for putting around your plants. So that being done, let me now get all of these root balls into the ground. So it's basically quite hard work digging here because of all the rocks and so forth, but I put a line of roots in here. They're not gonna get no extra special soil or anything like that. These are so robust, these plants, so I just need to fill in with the soil that is already here. Back around these root balls. And I am sure that within just a couple of days even, they will have bounced back. Just like that. Oh yes, just like that. One at the end, make it stand up. There we go. Ooh. Extra soil anywhere and everywhere I can get it from at the moment. There's not much. And this will look like a little bit of a mess for a while. That is just the way it is. So, every time I get rocks, I throw them up to the rock pile. Like that somehow. And then, like that. Now I did do a video where I did make leaf mold. And you can go back and see that video, how I did that. But I'm going to be getting some of my leaf mold and placing that on the top as an isolating layer around these plants to give them that extra help they need just here in the beginning. So that's one layer of them here. There's so many stones in the middle here that I actually can't dig into that area. So I'm going to take the rest of my roots, go and work on the other side. And then if I have any left, I will try and plot some in here and there if I can make some small holes. But I do basically just want this area to be the area I place any of these common comfrey that I find round and about so that I get a really nice look of this plant in here. So now I am finished with everything. My elder buckthorn is in place, my jumbo bamboos are in place, 
my common comfrey is in place. I've used a lot of it as mulch. And now I am going to get my leaf mold and cover the whole area so it looks really nice and neat. So just have a look at this wonderful leaf mold I have made. It's just come out perfectly. It's been in some wooden frames since last autumn and it's already broken down a real lot and it's perfect for placing over the top of this border now to keep back most of those weeds and to keep the border insulated so that it retains more moisture. It's so important right now. So I need to get this all around at the bottom of my border now. Mm, and this smells so good. It just smells like fresh soil. No smell of manure or anything like that, just fresh garden leaves that are already rotted down. <laughs> So I want to take care of these common comfrey first because they've got a very shallow layer of soil. I couldn't dig that deep. So they'll need this to help them establish themselves, keep them moist. So now this good thick layer of leaf mold will ensure me that these are those plants that are going to be able to come up easiest while retaining all the other kinds of weed plants I don't want out of the picture for a little while longer. Good morning everybody. Yes, now it's the next day because this border behind me took me all day yesterday to sort out as far as I got. And I was up this morning early, six o'clock and out and finished off the rest around this border as well as planting out other plants and potting up other hostas and things like that before it gets really hot today because today here is going to be around 30 degrees Celsius, which is so hot for us here in Sweden. <laughs> so I wanted to get everything done while it was very cool. It was around 16 degrees Celsius this morning when I came out and I had to have a jacket on and it was just perfect to get this job finished. But now I am ready to take you in for a closer look because I have planted out a lot of different plants now and I'm hoping that this border is going to fill out and look absolutely wonderful grow out this year a little bit more maybe and then next year just bounced out as a beautiful border. The tree shrub I've put in the middle is looking absolutely amazing today as well. It's not drooping at all in its leaves. I watered everything so thoroughly and I had it actually standing in a bucket of water overnight so it got to really soak up as much moisture as possible before I transplanted it and that has really done the job. The tree is looking amazing and you will finally get to see its canopy. So I'm just going to take you in for the closer look and as we go around you'll get to see the different plants I've put in there and at the same time while I've been working in this border I have seen a couple of baby toads and that has made me so happy so that I just want to plot in some little video snippets so you can see that the wildlife is already in this border and really appreciating the pile of rocks that are at the front here and all of the leaf mold and everything else that's going on and this very moist border at the moment and this is fantastic and the toads are here even before we have any water in our little heart pond that's going to be here it's the shape of a heart and it fills up in the autumn and it stays full of water until it comes to late spring and then as it gets hotter the groundwater sinks and the water sinks out and it completely dries out so we do need to get this sorted out with a black lining and i don't know when that's going to happen and that's why i decided to go ahead and make this border and get it going already now before that happens because then all of this is going to look fantastic and then i can work on the back side of the border of the pond when it finally gets put together but i will show you the hole and well it's going to be fantastic. So let's have a little look quickly at these toads. I just can't get enough of these little cuties. Look at them. And there are actually quite a few little toads crawling around here at the moment. So this is just so amazing for me to see. It's perfect. So see what's just popped out while I'm working here cleaning off the stones with water. A cute little toad. Isn't that fabulous? And that shows you how fantastic and important it is to have all of these rocks 
as hiding places for these wonderful little endangered species. So I'm so pleased to see this little fellow here now who's really going to enjoy this stone mound. There he goes. So cute. Bye bye. Enjoy your home in all the rocks. <laughs> and there he goes into a little cave. And look at him sitting in there. What a perfect little spot for a perfect little toad. So cute. And to show you the perspective, we can zoom right out here. And that's where he's hiding, right in there, where all of these stones are and the bamboos behind. So aren't they cute? It's absolutely fantastic. I know that I've made a perfect habitat now for lots of amphibians and there'll also be reptiles that come in here because we have lizards and snakes and so forth. And then there's all the other insects as well. And when these flowers flower out, there'll be lots of food for all these insects to collect and they will pollinate the plants and it will be absolutely fantastic. And the tree has flowers for pollination and then lots of berries that come out on it that are perfect for the birds. So I really have made a border that's very good for the biodiversity that's going to be going on around this pond area here. So let's now go in for that closer look. So right, let's get closer here. So before we look at the border, you can see a kind of outline of the heart shape of what is going to be the pond and it extends down to this end of this hole and if we go around behind my hazelnut bush here we can actually have a little preview of where the pond is and where the new border is so that's the new border on the back side so even though it's difficult to appreciate how this is going to be you can see here on the edge I have these common comfrey all planted in and they are all over the area and out on the edge, all along the edge here where I put this wooden tree trunk. And here there's a fern that came up itself. So I kept it in the border. But just to show you how quick and easy these plants bounce back, these common comfrey, have a look at the leaves on these plants down here. There's new shoots sticking up. The leaves on this plant new ones sticking up the ones on the plant here standing up happy ready to go so these are going to fill out this area absolutely wonderfully and i've placed pieces of wood in the border and my leaf mold that i did a whole video on so you can go back and see that video on how i make my leaf mold it's been absolutely perfect for this job on the stone in the middle you can see i've put some lovely pink flowering pelargoniums and I'm just going to get down into the hole now so we can have a closer look at all this. Oh, here we go. So there are the pelargoniums on the pot there. And this is all of the little stones that I found and rocks and so forth that I've placed around. Underneath there's a gigantic rock that was in the ground and we had an excavator come in and take out a lot of the big stones that were in this hole down here where I dug out all of this by hand myself. So just so you can get an idea, this is what the garden was like before I started excavating the pond. And then I started the job of hand digging and I thought, oh, this was going to be quite easy. And then I quickly discovered that the ground is absolutely full of boulders and rocks and stones and all sorts and that I'd never be able to get any of these up out of the ground on my own. So I decided to hand dig around these rocks as much as I could anyway and then years later when our water was put in at our cottage we asked them to dig up and take out all of the larger boulders so that we just have the hole left in the ground and that's where we are right now, waiting for this pond to still get finished. 
when I started excavating in 2017. <laughs> There's a bracken growing down here, fern. And if we look around, we pan around, you can see the rest of the pond hole. And there's grass that loves growing down here, a specific kind of grass. And it survives even though this fills up with water and freezes and everything else. They're growing absolutely fantastic here. They've come here by themselves. So here we have the jumbo bamboos and more of the common comfrey on the side over here too and here you can see i've put in another one of these wooden stumps for all the biodiversity and you can see that i've planted in these geranium roseanne and i hope they're going to fill out the area and they flower all summer so they should be absolutely fantastic here and behind that i've actually planted in a joe pie weed and these can get pretty tall. These can get like two meters or so tall. There you can see some of the pink flowers. And then I'm going to go all the way up now so you can see the canopy of the tree. And here we go. There's all of the leaves on this elder buckthorn. And well, look at the leaves. You can see they have not wilted they are not sagging they are not sad in any way this is the next day remember and by this time most trees and so forth will be wilting but this one has taken off an absolute treat there's the stems with the jumbo bamboo in front and the pelagoniums so if we go up again, now you can see the whole canopy of this tree shrub, how it fills up this space. Look at the beautiful blue sky today. Oh, it's going to be so hot. But this shrub has transplanted like a dream. I'm so pleased about this. And it's so perfect in the middle. You can see our crystal cottage in the distance there. And this all just looks so fabulous and the covering of the ground with all the leaf mold. It's just beautiful and old tree stumps and so forth. So back on the other side, you'll be able to see that I also planted a Joe Pye weed. But look at these jumbo bamboos here, looking very happy today after having been soaked for a couple of hours and then in the ground here where it's very moist where they were before was very dry so they're going to be very happy so there's the second joe pie weed here with its flowers on it so i hope they're going to bush out and fill out the area and give us lots of flowers that are pink and if we look at the bottom here you can see more of the geranium roseanne givat that I've planted here. So this was two small clumps that I split and I'm expecting they're going to take off and fill out with bounds of purple flowers all summer together with the common comfrey here that will be standing up within a week with lots of new leaves. And knowing that I have this evergreen bamboo now Oh, that makes me so happy. Look at these beautiful pelagonians. There's lots of flowers coming out. This was in an area of my garden where the deer came and ate off all of its flowers. It was covered and now it's bouncing back with new flowers. I have other pots full of flowers, but they need to be somewhere where the deer can't get to them. They don't eat the leaves, they just eat the flowers. So now let's go up and have a look at the canopy from this view of my shrub tree. And look at that, it's just absolutely amazing how well this has transplanted. Let's get closer, we can. So there we go, you can see all the leaves, but I'm not sure if you can see the berries on them at the moment. Yes, you can see some berries here, I think. Look at that, absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I needed the height here and this was the perfect plant that had self-seeded itself 
and grown out for years and years in our crystal woods area. And now it has a focal point of its own. And you can see all the posts that are helping support it just in the beginning. So this is the border, tree stumps, and the side view perspective from this side. See if we can get a closer look at these Joe Pye weed flowers that are just about to burst. There they are, absolutely beautiful. They are coming out a little bit more on the other plants, so we'll go around and have a look at that. So back behind the Thuya, Occidentalis Brabant, and round to the other side. So this edge, I have a wooden plank as well, and I just decided to put some of the stones along the edge that I had in the border. And you can see the common comfrey here, all doing absolutely fine. And a tree stump that's very, very rotten and was very light, so I just placed it there for the biodiversity. And you can see this side view perspective. And let's have a look at this Joe Pye weed. So there you go. You can see all these beautiful pink flowers. And there wasn't much that came up this year because the slugs actually nibbled them all the way down their stems while they were just emerging. So there were only two stems that managed to make it up this year out of a whole bundle. So I'm hoping that next year I'll get more stems coming up and it'll be bushier and I'll be able to fill out more and more here and give me a lovely two metre high display With these flowers and their lovely leaves and their lovely burgundy stems as well and you can see behind i put another rotting tree stump and all the rocks for all the toads and the frogs that will come later on and all the insects and the evergreen bamboos So beautiful. So standing in my wild orchard garden, you can see into bonfire garden behind, and then Thea Occidentalis Brabant, and then this border behind that, and how it all looks. Cleared out and clean, and with a lovely tree shrub to boot. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased. So pleased I got this done been meaning to do this for a while now and then we can have a look down here again at the hole you can see the other side of the heart here the stones go around and then there's the other side and that is our view into the garden of new beginnings all the way to the other side where there is silver way so this pond is perfectly placed here in amongst everything. It gets morning to late morning, dappled sunlight to a little bit of direct sunlight, and then it's in the shade and gets kind of dappled light. So it's not standing in direct light all the time and it's not in total shade either. Changes completely during the day and that's perfect for all of these plants and the whole area. So I really hope you enjoyed seeing the whole transformation of this border. It was hard, hard work and it took me a long, long time, much longer than I anticipated, that's for sure. But now it's done and it's on its way. So all I have to say now is thank you very much once again for watching Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up. And I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.